I should note that, that this is work uh, that I've done with, uh, with Tasu uh, Woldahana. Um, and uh, ideally, he would be here presenting this, but uh, he, we invited him. Uh, he, but uh, as the president of the university, he uh, found it difficult to get away. So you have a poor substitute in me uh, for him, uh, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is one of the uh, one of the chapters in the um, in the book that Andy had um, had pointed out. I, I also did one uh, on Madagascar, um, and uh, that, uh, as you may have noticed, that was in the poor performing uh, countries. And I've I've presented that before. I'm happy to present the uh, the success case uh, here. Um, and this is one of uh, the chapters in which we um, we use the uh, the utility consistent um, measures of uh, for the poverty line and the the uh, standard um, software package that I'll talk a bit about um, as we go along. But so just to start with the basic question, the simple question is, uh, what are the levels of uh, of poverty in Ethiopia, um, and how have they changed? Right, and we typically measure these with household surveys. Um, and so uh, we have three household surveys uh, that were available to us for this, uh, this analysis, uh, 2000, 2005, and 2011. There is a 2016 survey that, uh, that was conducted, and uh, the Central Statistical Agency has analyzed that and have written their analytical report, uh, which has not ma been made public to people like me uh, yet. Um, and uh, the, the data, um, we're, we're working on, on, uh, on getting it and analyzing it. Uh, so uh, we'll work with these uh, these three years with the understanding that um, there's more in the future. Uh, and so the, the question is, do snapshots of poverty um, from household surveys taken in these three years represent long-term trends, um, or are they uh, due to short-term shocks, or is it some combination of, uh, of the two? Um, so when we ask about how uh, monetary poverty has changed using these household surveys, uh, this measurement, as Andy had uh, indicated earlier, uh, really depends on the consistency of a number of things. Uh, the first one being uh, the surveys over time. Uh, the questionnaires, are, are they similar? Uh, and the, the sampling and, and the like. Um, and then once you have the data, uh, do you construct the consumption aggregate in a similar manner? Right, and then uh, the poverty line is always that uh, that tricky uh, next step uh, before you can apply uh, you can apply this to a FGT measure, for example. Um, and the uh, the, the um, difficulty here is maintaining both specificity and consistency. And I I, I talk about this because this is the uh, one of the main ideas of of uh, this software package, uh, with the idea that this with specificity, right? You have the a common uh, consumption. You have a uh, consumption bundle that represents the uh, the consumption patterns of uh, of the poor in a particular region. Uh, so you'd want to use the consumption patterns. Um, to value uh, the uh, minimum or calorie requirements uh, for a poverty line, uh, and yet they need to be consistent um, across uh, regions and over time, uh, representing the same level of utility at, uh, among the uh, right at the poverty line. Uh, so the original poverty lines for uh, Madagascar, or excuse me, for Ethiopia, uh, as conducted by the CSA, uh, were calculated in 2001 based on a. a, a um, uh, cost of basic needs approach, and then have been adjusted for inflation and regional uh, price variation for uh, comparability um, across uh, over time and across regions. But one thing to note is once we have a poverty line that we are comfortable with, um, we can think of this as a cost of living index uh, for those uh, around the poverty line or the poor, right, that allow for interpersonal, intertemporal, uh, and uh, spatial uh, welfare comparisons. And this lets us uh, look at, at uh, distributions of consumption. Now, um, the approach here then is to use this, uh, this PLEASE software. It's the poverty line estimation analytical software that's available on the, the wider website. Uh, there's a link to it when you go to the, the book uh, for, for this project. Um, and the idea here is to calculate food poverty lines that are uh, for uh, various spatial domains. So in Ethiopia, we have 20 spatial domains. Uh, we have nine urban and rural and nine regions, and then two, and then Addis, and, uh, and then Harare, which we have uh, co uh, combined together. Um, they're anchored on uh, domain-specific calorie requirements, um, and it's based on the uh, least cost bundle reflecting uh, the, uh, domain, uh, the domain consumption patterns. There's that, that specificity uh, that I was talking about. Um, 
And then for consistency, uh, the, the uh, software package, which is um, a, a combination of Stata code and, um, and GAMS code that you can, um, then you, you uh, apply for um, each, the, your particular country, uh, tests for revealed preference. With the idea being that um, if um, household, uh, households in a particular region uh, should be choosing the least cost bundle that achieves the, uh, the uh, uh, calorie requirements that, uh, that uh, we kind of have a sense of uh, for the poverty line um, at the prices uh, in the region. Now, if we compare this consumption pattern uh, uh, to other uh, uh, prices, and we find that the, uh, the consumption bundle is cheaper elsewhere, they, they must not have been choosing the least cost bundle. Um, and so that, that violates this, uh, this consistency. And so the, the program uh, uh, adjusts the consumption bundle, or the cons consumption pattern, this consumption bundle um, for the poverty line, uh, the region-specific poverty line, um, in a way uh, using an entropy method to uh, minimize the, uh, the uh, distance from the original consumption bundle to the new consumption bundle that's utility consistent um, to, uh, to come up with uh, the food poverty lines. And then the food poverty lines are scaled up in standard ways to uh, get region-specific uh, poverty lines. Now the data that we use are uh, the three uh, years of the household income and consumption, income consumption and expenditures uh, survey and uh, the welfare monitoring survey, um, 2000, 2005, and 2011. These are nationally representative multi-purpose multi surveys uh, with sample sizes that have grown uh, over time, uh, which is not an issue for, for comparability, um, but uh, just to um, be aware of this. Now, data issues that uh, have us cautious in our, uh, in our analysis um, include the fact that, well, first of all, the questionnaires are, are identical uh, for all three of these years, which is, uh, which is encouraging uh, for uh, consistency regions, reasons. But the number of food codes uh, uh, differs. So the categories that people are asked for uh, and their consumption uh, in the expenditure module uh, incre well, increased between 2001 and 2005 and then decreased. Um, and so we just need to be careful about this because when uh, Menno Pradhan years ago had, uh, did some analysis in Indonesia uh, where he found that uh, when you ask people uh, with uh, more detailed food codes, they tend to report more consumption. Uh, and so we just need to be uh, aware of this and there's not much we can do about it uh, other than just be cognizant of this. The timing of the data collection is also uh, something that concerned us a bit. The first two years uh, are uh, similar in that they were collected over two short uh, time periods, uh, July and August, and then uh, January and February. Um, in the 2011, however, was collected over uh, the period of one year, uh, which uh, now, if you look at inflation rates, um, and in, you notice that uh, those the dashed lines are uh, show the survey years, uh, we we notice that um, food poverty, uh, excuse me, uh, food inflation rates uh, were around 35, 37 uh, percent over the course of the collection of the uh, of the data for 2011, which uh, gets us a little concerned um, in that uh, it, you know uh, we need to adjust for that, and we do uh, by uh, adjusting. Uh, by uh, deflating using um, uh, temporal price uh, deflators uh, for the quarters within the survey year uh, as a way of, of capturing that intra-survey uh, uh, inflation that, uh, that occurred. Um, we also uh, restricted our analysis to, uh, for the 2011 data to uh, just those time periods uh, that are comparable to um, the, the earlier years, and we found that there, there wasn't um, any uh, qualitative difference. Uh, and I don't report that, that here, but just uh, we, we remain a bit, um, a, a bit cautious in our, uh, in our interpretations, and, and this is why the import, that it's important to, uh, to consider other data uh, as complements to the, the household surveys. Now, uh, to get to the poverty estimates, um, and I'll give it some context after this. Um, so our, our initial poverty estimates for, 2000, uh, for the year 2000 were roughly 47% of, uh, of Ethiopians uh, were poor. Um, and that fell considerably uh, b uh, by 2011 by some 23 percentage points, uh, with most of this uh, occurring uh, between 2005, um, in, in fact, practically all of it, uh, between 2005 and, and 2011. Um, and we, we see uh, that the 
uh, the uh, more the, the depth and severity of poverty the uh, uh, also show similar patterns that uh, little change um, uh, between 2005, uh, 2000, 2005, but then a big decrease uh, between 2005 and 2011. So we see this this uh, decrease in poverty, but it's kind of it's there are different experiences in different parts of uh, of the country. Uh, in urban areas, we saw, in fact, a, a uh, rather sharp uh, decline in poverty between 2000 and 2005. Um, and then a, uh, a bit more moderated uh, uh, decline, though still nine percentage points is, is, uh, is quite big, uh, but this also occurred uh, this time period, you had a very high uh, food inflation in, um, uh, in, in the country. Um, and uh, similar, uh, similarly, the, uh, the, uh, the depth and severity of poverty uh, showed similar patterns. Now, um, rural poverty was higher uh, than urban poverty, which is not surprising. Uh, in fact, the, the, while the urban areas experienced greater uh, declines in poverty uh, early on in the, in the decade, uh, rural areas uh, experienced uh, uh, more of that decline in the latter part of the, of the decade, which is why at the national level, that's where we see the, uh, the, the big change, given that, uh, that roughly 85% of the population lives in, in rural areas. Um, and, and indeed, you see a very slight increase in, in, uh, in poverty as measured by um, all of our uh, measures between 2000 um, and 2005 before a decline. Um, I hate it when people put lots of numbers up like this, but I just put this up here, right, just to show you uh, a number of things. One is these are, the, these are our spatial domains for which we calculate different, uh, different poverty lines. Um, and let me just highlight the, uh, the, the area that, uh, that started out with the lowest level of poverty uh, was Addis, uh, with uh, 30, r roughly 35% in, in 2005. Um, and uh, the major decline, in fact, all of the decline in poverty in Addis, uh, as, as measured by um, our surveys, uh, was between 2000 and 2005. Right. And these are remarkable uh, uh, drops in, in, um, in poverty, considering that uh, it fell by some 24 percentage points, having started at, at 35%. Uh, the, po uh, the poorest region was uh, rural Afar, uh, which started with roughly 80% uh, poor, uh, and experienced some uh, 37 percentage point drop in, uh, in uh, the number of people who were, uh, or the percentage of the population that was poor. Um, and uh, unlike rural areas in general, um, a lot of this change, in fact, all of this change uh, was in the early part of the, uh, of the decade, right? So in the rural areas in general, we'll see in a minute again. Um, so what we're seeing is we're seeing very, we're seeing different uh, experiences in terms of uh, where poverty was, uh, was declining or if it was declining in certain parts. But over the course of the decade, you see that uh, there is a, uh, that all of the, in all of our spatial domains, uh, poverty declined. And in some, some cases, quite remarkably, uh, such as in uh, rural Diradawa, uh, 56 percentage points. Now, um, as I said earlier, we can use the poverty lines to, uh, to adjust the uh, household consumption so that we can uh, make uh, regional and uh, temporal comparisons. And so here we, uh, we convert everything into 2011 uh, uh, Addis prices. Um, and uh, plot the CDFs, uh, or as, uh, as Martin Revallian has called them, the poverty incidence curves. Um, and uh, so there are a couple things to note here. So this is at the, at the national level. Um, and so while um, we saw in the, uh, in the previous uh, slide that there's lots of uh, different experiences uh, in, in changes in, in poverty, um, you, if you're looking for the, where the 2000 line is, it's, it's right there, right underneath um, the, uh, the 2005 line. So on average, nothing changed, but that's on average, uh, and none of, us, none of us really lives on average, right? Uh, and so the, the different regions experience different, uh, uh, different levels of, of change, but on average, really nothing changed nationally. Then, the, then there was a um, a, a drop in, uh, in poverty between uh, 2005 and 2011. Um, and, uh, so, and we see that it's um, almost across the board. The top 95% uh, 
of the, of the uh, population uh, experience this decline in, in poverty. So regardless of the poverty line around uh, you know, where we have it, right, uh, we have a close to first order dominance, but you'll notice uh, that there's a considerable overlap at the lower end of the distribution. And so uh, we don't see the poorest of the poor are no better off, and, and that we didn't capture with our, uh, with our other measures. Um, and this is um, you know, kind of getting at what Martin Revalian mentioned yesterday, uh, that uh, while we talk about the success in, in Ethiopia, uh, the poorest of the poor, are, uh, the poorest 5% there, tend to be stuck there. Um, and we see that in, in urban areas. So here we see a, um, a uh, considerable uh, decline in, in poverty almost across the board um, again uh, uh, between 2000, 2005, and then 2011, um, though uh, not as, as uh, much improvement uh, at, the, at the lower end of the distribution again. Oops, sorry. Trying to go through this a little quicker. Um, and then here we see the, uh, the rural areas. It's Basically, this, the, the story we see at the, uh, at the urban levels, or at the national levels, given uh, the predominance of the, uh, of the rural population. Um, and there we go. Uh, so here we see the very slight increase between 2000 and 2005, and then the, uh, the large decrease um, uh, over uh, between 2005 and 2011. Um, OK, so uh, just very quickly. Um, Inequality, while we've been focusing on, on poverty, inequality uh, has uh, rose, it, uh, not monotonically, but over the course of the decade, um, it rose whether we use the, uh, the Gini coefficient, I'm just going to use this, whether we use the Gini coefficient um, um, or the, the tile index and for urban and rural areas, which again is not that surprising given that we see the, that the poorest of the poor um, are not uh, much better off. Um, um, okay, just some context. So since 2000, right, Ethiopia has, uh, has um, uh, been hit by persistent weather shocks, right? Uh, periods of high inflation and a post-election uh, crisis after 2005. Nonetheless, over the, uh, uh, over the course of the decade and, and continuing, uh, Ethiopia has, um, has experienced what, uh, what uh, Paul Doroch um, and Emily Schmidt refer to as a uh, changing economic landscape. Right? Uh, and this is in part uh, due to uh, the government's agricultural, uh, agricultural development-led industrialization strategy, what Joe Stiglitz referred to this morning as, as this emphasis on, on agriculture as a, uh, as a means of growth. Um, and uh, the idea here being that rapid agricultural growth is a means of accelerating economic transformation and reducing poverty. Um, and so what is this, uh, what is this uh, changing landscape? Increased agricultural production initially due to uh, expansion of cultivated area, but increasingly uh, evidence that it's due to higher yields. And this may be due to um, the uh, introduction or the uh, massive expansion of uh, extension agents um, and uh, evidence of uh, improved modern input use, whether it's maize and teff seeds or, or chemical fertilizer. Improved infrastructure uh, it has also uh, appeared to contribute uh, in the, the road sector. Uh, there's a road sector development program, which has uh, resulted in, in uh, thousands of, of kilometers of roads being built that, that we find has uh, integrated wholesale markets uh, across the country. Um, and uh, the uh, building of the hydroelectric dams provides some, uh, the possibility of, of, uh, of more electricity, though, uh, Electrification remains quite low in rural areas. Telecommunications, uh, with the um, uh, availability of cell phones uh, in a survey area where we were very remote, you could go up to a, a hill and, and get a signal, so um, that, uh, that improves communication across markets. Um, and the production safety net, uh, uh, the Productive Safety Nets program, which was introduced in 2005, um, has, uh, has also appeared to uh, uh, provide some stability in terms of food security and, um, and investment in, in, um, uh, in agriculture. Um, now, in terms of complementary data during the time period, so is this a snapshot? 
Uh, we have national accounts data, uh, non-nationally non representative data, and uh, non-monetary measures. I'll very quickly talk about the national accounts data and non-monetary measures uh, to give us a, a glimpse here. So here from the national accounts data, per capita GDP, as we uh, can see, so after about 2004, we see that the per capita GDP um, has, has risen and continues uh, to rise. So give us a sense of where we're going from there. I'm almost there. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and if we look at a sectoral breakdown of this, uh, agriculture has been uh, an important part of it. But we see that, uh, that services, as, as Eric Thorbeck uh, mentioned in his talk earlier, that, that, that services have become an important uh, source of employment and production, uh, whereas industry has grown uh, but not quite as fast. Um, turning to non-monetary measures, we see that uh, underage, uh, under five stunting has decreased over time. So we're seeing that while well, we have these snapshots of poverty and improvement uh, with the, the nationally representative household surveys, we're seeing also stunting that is falling using the DHS, right? And uh, using the retrospective part uh, questionnaire of the, of the DHS, we also see that infant mortality um, has, uh, has declined um, over time and persistently over time. Um, so, we have uh, these two measures of, of non-monetary measures, uh, but we also find rising uh, net schooling enrollment rates and that diets have improved um, in terms of uh, food quantities and calorie intake, falling food shares in terms of total consumption, and a shift toward um, high value foods. Right? Uh, so concluding remarks here, right, using this utility consistent um, approach to uh, measuring the poverty lines, uh, we have snapshots of poverty in which we see steady but uneven progress uh, over the, the decade with the headcount ratio, uh, national headcount ratio falling from 52% uh, to 30%. To in urban areas, the gains were in the first half of the decade, in rural areas in the second half of the decade, but um, dis discouragingly, the poorest of the poor uh, are no better off. Uh, and we have uh, Ethiopia's uh, changing landscape in the, the context in which this has taken place. Uh, and we see persistent improvements in, uh, in, uh, as measured by national accounts and non-monetary measures. So in short, these snapshots uh, uh, from the household surveys appear to represent uh, long-term trends, uh, though uneven uh, and a bit more muted when we look at the non-monetary measures. Thank you.